I was an Ed Begley fan, mostly from ER. Yeah, I guess he was okay on Roseanne. But, I, you know, three years ago, I remember being annoyed by him because of, he was so hardcore as an environmentalist and his electric cars and all that stuff. And then watching this interview today, compared to the people now, oh my gosh, if ever, all the people shoving environmental stuff down everyone's throat were like Ed Begley, what a general or kinder world this would be. This might be so far the best interview Whoopi's done with anybody. Because he knew, she knew Ed Begley. They talked about meeting and how Michael Richards was the most hilarious person in their lives and connected them. And, you know, she knew a lot about Ed and it showed in the interview. So if you're an Ed Begley fan, this might be the definitive interview for you. Whoopi, how are you? I'm good, honey. I'm really good. How you doing? Very well. Very well indeed. You look terrific. Well, I'm happy to be here. That's why. Well, see. <laughs> I'm sitting with Ed Bagley, Jr. Most people, I guess, know you from, from the movies and from television, and they know all about your environment and work. But the first thing I want to ask you is I wanted to, what's up with your car? Oh, well, we had to go out and we had to run out. We didn't walk. We ran out right. to make sure that the lights were off because if the lights are on too long, it's not the usual thing where you can get a jump start. It's right. an electric-powered car. It's electric, <laughs> and they thought the lights were on, and so we had to run out and make sure they were, in fact, off because I wouldn't be making it home. So, I'd be bumming a ride from you. But so now, like, do you get, like, PG&E bills? <laughs> Is there like a special thing that you have to plug it in? Or no, just... you plug it into any, out any outlet, but I don't have an electric bill because I have all solar pa uh, panels on my roof, so I'm off the grid. See, you're the man. Well, you are the man. I'm having fun. I guess so. Well, let's <laughs> find out how much fun when we come back with Ed Bagley Jr. So, you, this, you, the car would really. The whoopee. Well, you know. We're back. I'm so, we're back with Ed Bagley Jr. I have to ask you one more question about the car, then I'll get off of it. When you're slowing down mm -hmm. on the freeway, <laughs> is there just a little bit of panic? I haven't had the pleasure of slowing down the freeway yet. I'm pretty careful. When I get on that 101 or the 405, right. I, I really know how much power I got. I haven't had that. But when you try to push it, you right. go outside that 50-mile envelope, you right. know, go past your range. You start to slow down. It's hopefully, you know, in a right. city. It's always, for me, it's been right. in a city street. You just kind of pull off the side. You turn on the radio for a while because that's on a separate battery. You listen to about two, three songs, and then you go again because the battery just sitting right. rejuvenates like a car battery. Let ah, it sit, honey, right, and then right. try to start right. again. It's the same principle. But you got, like, 12 of them or 18 of them, so you got 18 times that. You just wait five minutes. I've always made it home. I've never really run out. Have you ever had to, you, have you ever had to like knock on somebody? I know this is the stupidest question, but have you ever had to knock on somebody's door and say, Hi, I know this is ridiculous. I made Bagley Jr. <laughs> and my car's run out of electricity? Yes, ma'am, I have done that. I try to avoid that. It's very frightening. Another thing happened the other night that was very scary. I had a problem with this, uh, with, with something technical I won't right. bore you with. It was a problem with the car, and I've really never had this. They're pretty efficient. They run good. But I had a problem, so I had to call the auto club. <laughs> so I got this guy that came to the auto club, and right out of the gate, I told him, I said, look, I don't want to scare you, but this is an electric car. Don't give me a hard time. I said, no, no, it's an electric car. Please don't give me a hard time. I said, okay, but it's electric. He gets in the thing. He says, your starter is gone. I said, well, that's a problem. Don't give me a hard time. I said, there is no starter. I'm telling you. 
he was upset. The man was so upset. I said, please come. She'll verify this. I said, come here and look under the hood. I'm not good. I said, please, just look. And he looked under the hood. And he looked at me. Don't you give me a hard time. He wouldn't let it go. <laughs> then he finally hooked it up because was, there is no starter. There's just a big hole in the engine compartment with a little tiny motor like a coffee can. And he thought I was messing with him. He thought it was candid camera. <laughs> You've been around some amazing women. You worked with Roseanne uh, Barr Arnold. I have to, I, you know, there's folks with these names. I love Roseanne. She's great. Yeah. You work with Denzel. I love Denzel, my pal. And you did Miss Streep. And you did Miss Streep and Roseanne in She Devil. Yeah, we had a lot of fun on She Devil. Darling, do you ever, I know that you grew up around actors and stuff, but do you ever pinch yourself and say, whoa? No, I have people for that. It's like we were talking about <laughs> earlier with Elaine May. I have people. I just have a pincher. I have a, a noogie person. I have all these people. <laughs> I don't need to pinch myself. You know, I've got I a want big a noogie staff. person. I've got a big, I've got handlers and a masseuse and a channeler and a spirit guide. And, no, I don't have any God, of that. You I don't have that any. LA thing to, wait a minute. I don't have any of that stuff. Rocco, I, I want a noogie person. <laughs> I want somebody to come along and say, yes. I just have to put that because that wasn't in my rider when I took the gig. <laughs> But I do have white nubials, <laughs> which I did want. You're entitled. I think so. So in a nice sedan chair carrying you around? Well, you know, they're not that strong. You have to, you know, <laughs> exercise them. You know, I have I'll them washed and sent to I'll my room. I'll just bet yes, you do. You, you know me. Um, but, but are you ever really surprised? Got surprised at what? Now I forgot the question. Pinch, <laughs> oh, pinch myself. Yes. We got into noogies. Noogies. Uh, and Melvin's. I was... I, yeah, I, I sometimes think, uh, I often think I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. We're in the top 0.00001% of people on this planet. You know, uh, we're very fortunate. But as you've probably learned, uh, you know, that's, it's not about the material stuff, yeah, you know? Because yeah. if, if stuff made you happy, there'd be nothing but happy people in Beverly Hills and unhappy people in Calcutta, and it doesn't quite work out that yeah, way. Yeah. So uh, it's not about stuff. It's, but I do pinch myself about the good fortune I have in other areas people that I know and care about, and my two kids, I have wonderful kids, you know, and uh, other people I'm very close to in my life. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm, yeah. I feel very wealthy in that way. Yeah. How do you raise kids in Hollywood, man? <laughs> How do you do it? Well, it's, it's a completely different world. Well, don't raise them in Hollywood, I guess, is the, is the key. I've, my kids uh, live uh, out of town up near Santa Barbara, and so it's, uh, it's, it's different up there. It's a different pace and everything, and they're doing very well. Yeah, they're two yeah. very good teenage kids. You were a Hollywood kid, yeah? Yeah, I was born at Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. Yeah, yeah. and grew up in the valley. I was a valley guy. I was kind of middle class. I wasn't part of the Beverly Hills scene right, and all that. Right. I was a Van Nuys, kind of, I guess, upper middle class son of a character actor. A very good character. Yes, he was. Yeah, he Boy, was. he was. Yeah, he was. Oscar winner. That's right. Sweet yeah. Bird of Youth. He did, he did real good. And he did a very good job uh, as a single father, you know, mm. because, uh, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was alone a lot of the time. And so he raised us, uh, you know, in a pretty good way for a guy on his own. Yeah. He did, he did good. Do you ever wonder... If you, I, I know it's a male, I believe it's a male thing. I'm not sure it's a male thing. Mm -hmm. But do you ever compare yourself and say, have I gotten to where I want to be in terms actor-wise, in terms of my dad? I don't know if I'm phrasing this the right way. Yeah, on a bad day, you do that stuff. You do those kind of comparisons. Yeah. Oh, why haven't I another besides a comparison with the dad? Right. Geez, my friend's starring in a movie, and why don't I, and the series, I got to get, you know, you get into that stuff. but. You know, none of that, you know, really means anything. You know, yeah. it's, it's not what it's about. You know, uh, one's happiness is hopefully based on other things than that. Because if you base your happiness on that stuff, you know, with the roller coaster that uh, this yeah. business is, yeah. you're going to be unhappy a lot of the time. Yeah. So, uh, no, I've, I've been very good. Uh, you know, I've been enjoying myself. I don't know what else to say. I don't... My dad was such a different guy and so wonderful at what he did. He had a big career in radio. Right. He had a big career on stage. Uh, he had a wonderful film and television career. He was so many things. Yeah. I can never be that. I try to be, you know... Who you are. Who I am yeah. as best I can. Yeah. I have a fan question. Do you have his Oscar? I have his Oscar oh, yes. up in my mantle. 
he willed it to me in his will, and uh, I have it. It's a great honor. And his Tony Award, another great honor. Right, right, right. He's a good man. Yeah. We'll be right back with Ed Bagley, Jr. That was subtle. <laughs> Our guests stay at the Century Plaza Hotel and Tower, offering the finest in luxury, service, and Southern California style. Near Beverly Hills on L.A.'s fashionable west side, the Century Plaza Hotel and Tower. Let's talk. You and I traveled across California together doing an environmental thing a yeah. couple of years ago with a lot of other folks prop 65 prop 65 that was that the water bill yeah clean water initiative the tough on toxics the people sure wanted to too passed yeah. by an overwhelming majority of Californians you think it's important for for actors and and I guess famous people to really come and talk about the things whether we agree with them or not the things that they believe in you think it has some effect I hope so. You got to be careful. You don't want to get to be a pain in the ass about it. You yeah. know, you don't want to get too preachy. And I, I, I try not to do that. I hope I don't do that. But I, as any citizen, have a right to my view and, right. and try to express it. More importantly, try to live it you know, rather than just talk about this stuff. I like to do it. I like to, you know, use very little and, uh, you know, to just, you know, be gentle with the few resources yeah. that we have. And that's, that's what I try to do. And, uh, because of that, you know, we're occasionally asked to do things like this, and it was, uh, it was a big success, that Prop 65 thing. Yeah. And they said it's so interesting. They said, oh, it's going to be the end of business in California. Nobody will be able to grow right. anything at the end right. of everything. Of course, none of that happened, you know. If anything, it's, it's been a, a law that's been quite lenient in many ways. So it, it's not the end of anything. And there's a lot of scare tactics. There's a lot of people that just don't want to change. They are very attached to business as usual. And yeah. it, as you know, it's hard to change people. People are very resistant to radical changes. Yeah. It's a surprise, though, somehow, because you think people would notice that there are things that really are going wrong, that, that we can actually have some. Because I don't think that I don't think that we can save Mother Earth. I mean, she's been around so long. Oh, yeah, she it's does, not about I mean, it's that. about us. Exactly, you know? exactly. And I wonder sometimes if people realize that what we're talking about is, is sort of, I don't know, an inevitable shift that's going to happen. I don't know if it'll happen in our lifetimes. But people and animals and things evolve. Are we, yeah. We're going through like an evolutionary process. Maybe. The language of it, I think, is very important. All the talk about saving the Earth is always... Yeah. I, I've been very reticent to say that because the Earth is a big old four and a half billion year old piece of rock that yeah. we don't need to save. It's been through much worse than we could ever throw of it. Just to look at some igneous rock, you can yeah. tell that. Yeah. But it's, it's about saving species. It's about saving maybe our own yeah. But you know. Yeah. That might be a good idea. But... Uh, yeah, we're going through some sort of a change, and I think, uh, I think it's about stuff, what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, people yeah. think stuff is what makes them happy. Yeah. And if people get away from that, we, we, may have, you know, we may have a little more happiness in our lives, yeah. I think. It would be nice. I think it would be nice to sort of have a couple of, like, fun years. I remember when, when there were fun times, you know. Yeah. Now, speaking of fun, check out the segue. You were stand-up. I didn't know that. I did stand up. I didn't up. know that. I wouldn't I bring it up around you because you have a real act. I had a an actet. I have a <laughs> an act like experience. But I did it for a while. I toured around colleges and clubs and concerts all around the country. Did you have a good time? I had a real good time. Why don't you do some more? Because it's too hard. I see you out there working, girl. I'm not going to do that hard oh, work. I'm going to go in there knock on the dressing room. Ed, you're ready for makeup. Oh, thank you. And what I, I talked to Whoopi. Okay, that's my day. <laughs> that's a good gig. Yeah, but. Do you do you like that live thing that happens? Do you ever think? Oh you, yeah, you miss that. Yeah. So now I restrict it to small rooms and dinner parties. <laughs> I try to get up and do a little stick, you know, around my friends. And is it funny? Um, I have my good days and my bad days. <laughs> well, so you're a stand-up. <laughs> I guess so. What stand-up do you know that's like funny all the time? Oh. Very few. Well, there's some that. Well, wait. A, our old pal Michael Richards is funny all the Michael time. I've never seen him not be funny. Yes. He's funny mowing the lawn. He's funny <laughs> rotating his tires. I have to tell them who Michael Richards is. <laughs> Michael Richards is on the show Steinfeld. Yeah. Seinfeld, and is a man I worked with in San Diego. 
in, the in 70s. 1978. That's right. Which is when I first met you. And what I saw were you, you in doing a play. down there? I was there visiting Michael. He was doing a play. I came to see him. I went, who is that woman? She's wonderful. Oh, that yeah, woman. yeah, yeah, right. Then we right. worked together a night of at least a dozen stars at the that's Wilshire right, Bell. That's right. That was sort of my first coming out here. Yeah, and you were good. I did, I did okay for yes, a newcomer. Yes, you did, Mm-hmm. Ed, we keep meeting in the strangest places, the strangest, most wonderful places, but I... I came to your wedding, which was lovely. Which one, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hello. <laughs> There's been a couple. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the cinematographer, yes. Exactly. The, yes. So how come we keep meeting in the night? Because I keep being married and, and on stage. Exactly. And, but you're going to get married again, so I'm out again. <laughs> I don't know what to Ships do, babe. Ships in the night. Well, congrats. Thank you. You gonna be directing anything? I actually wrote a script, uh, in a, a love story set against an environmental background. So let's see if I can get it done. What do you mean, like, like a toxic thing is running not a real, muck? No, it's and... not quite like that. It's just, um, yeah, it's a, it's a thing with this, uh, this guy who's a real consumer. He's a right. real kind of pig man in a fast car, you know and everything, and, uh, and that would be me. <laughs> I like the title. Yeah. I, that, I like the idea, not the title. Pig Man in a Fast Car. Yeah. That's my idea. And uh, he meets a, a lovely lady, so that's, we'll see. These oh, cool. things are hard to do. They, why, though? Why are they so hard to do, do you think? Well, because, um, geez, there's not a lot of money for movies or anything else these days. The economy's kind of tight. They're not making a lot of movies or TV shows. They're still making them, but they're yeah. not making as many as they used to. Yeah. Everything's tight. They're not making as many, you know, Ford Festivas as they used to, are they? <laughs> I'm making a lot of things. I didn't know Ford made a Festiva. <laughs> I think they do. Well, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, when you think about the things that you want to do as an actor, do you have the freedom? I mean, do you, do you get the scripts that you want often? Uh, what I decided a few years ago, and this was uh, this was just a couple years ago, having done stuff, some good work, and then some work that I did for reasons other than the material. Mm. Uh, I decided a few years ago to just try to concentrate on just material, yeah. not caring about the, the financial end of it. Right. And that has been so much fun. Are you feeling more calm these days about you? Yeah. That's a, I guess I have been. Yeah. Because you get to a place where you think, oh, okay, I must do this because this will do my career. But you, you're doing things because you like them. Yeah, and that's uh, a great relief. There's a certain amount of pleasure in that. Yeah. Do you ever get advice from your actor friends? Do you ever call them up and say, I'm thinking about doing this movie, what do you think? Dabney Coleman gives me advice a lot. Kind of. Get out of the business. You're all wrong, man. You have no talent. None. You have, like, no talent, okay? Wrong. That's Dabney. Peter that Falk, too. Oh, Jesus Christ, Dad, you're really kind of a pain in the ass. If you could just go and, I don't know, sell insurance or something. Do Merrill. Please. I can't do Merrill Street. Do Merrill. No, I'll I do can't. my Merrill for you. You do Merrill Street. Shall I go do ahead. my Merrill for you? This yeah. is the French lieutenant's woman. I can't believe this. But you have to do your Meryl. I, I can't do that. You, can do, you just did two. I'm going to give you one. Go ahead. I'm greedy. I'm asking for three. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Meryl. Very nice. Thank I you. felt like Jeremy Irons. I was there. <laughs> you were on the key. You were out the edge near the water. There was a storm brewing. I saw it all. Thank very, God we very didn't nice. sink. You're not going to do your mouth. Come on, do your mouth. I'll do something else. All right. See if you can guess who it is. Okay. Well, Beggs, first of all, you shouldn't be acting at all. I think maybe you should be working in craft service. You don't have a clue, Begley. Get back to acting class now, Beggs. You does not have a chance. That's the Master Jack. Okay. That's the Master Jack. I, I love watching him. I can't wait to see Hoffa. Me too. It you looks know. good, oh, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> subtlety. We'll be right back with Ed Begley, Jr. Man, I saw the... Well, Ed, 
said, the next time your ship's passing in the night, toot, honey, toot. <laughs> so I know you're going by. I'll, I'll drive by slow and honk. Well, all right. Definitely. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. This was wonderful. Wow, you wonderful. And you wonderful. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Donna. <laughs> Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. There's further patronage information in the video descriptions below. Thanks for all the support and making the channel grow.